Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Looks like we may be a little thin in numbers, but uh, we're here with a joyful heart. And I must explain to you that when you have a green coat, well, there she is. When you have a green coat from teaching at a school with the colors green, you don't get to wear it very often after school, you know, when you leave school. And then especially when you have a Charlie Brown Christmas tree tie that you get to wear around the kids for all the concerts, you don't get to wear that very often. So I'm glad Mark's not here today because he told me, don't wear that tie again. But, uh, <laughs> but he, had, he didn't get to see the whole ensemble either, so you know. So I made it, and I'm dressed up today, so that might shock some of you. Everything will go back to normal next week, you know. <laughs> You're impressed. Well, good. It cleans up pretty good. <laughs> so um, under our announcements, we just have the prayer vigil and Bible study on uh, Saturdays. Okay, and that's at 11 a.m. We're closed. We're not going to do it the next two. Oh, okay. Oh. Turn around, he says. All right. I just read what's in the bulletin. Okay. All right. So I know Karen has an announcement she wants to talk about. We'll be here after 2 o'clock. After 2 o'clock. So I'll bury them and get stuff out. And then I'll put this stuff ready for the next day. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sure. And there is Christmas cards in the back on the air market. Nobody don't have their Christmas card. I think she has them back there. And at 186. Uh, say is how good it is to have Paige with us today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Gail, it's good to have you here today. Yeah. So, was she here last week? She was I here. I couldn't see. Okay. Well, it's always I'll always mention it because I just feel like it's good to have you here. It's good to see you. And Paige, if you didn't hear me before, I said it's good to have you here today. <laughs> oh, I have a card here from Greg and Carol. It says, thank dear old town church. Um, 
It's our season for savoring the truly important things in life with love and prayers as you celebrate Jesus, God's most wondrous gift. Thank you for your generous Christmas gift, Greg and Carol. So, there's... She... Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, do we have any other announcements from you? Uh, okay. Oh, yes, Mary Lou. We have a birthday cake in the back. Everybody come get a piece. A birthday cake. Okay. And is there a birthday to be put up today? Oh, I see. Jesus' birthday. Very good. Any birthdays or anniversaries? Come on, little one. I want you to listen close, Jamie. This is Four whole years. is tomorrow, okay? So, December the 20th, 1980. Yep. I was only a sophomore in college. <laughs> we were down to them too. <laughs> well, I know you were. I don't know about this old guy. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess now we have the lighting of our candle. Sometimes when we are trying something new or when we are facing a difficult decision or when we want to celebrate something or when we just feel lost and alone and uncertain about life, the universe and everything, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or word it like that. We say we need advice or support or companions or someone to come along beside us and lift us up so we can see more than the tops of our shoes. We seek a blessing. For many of us, we go home, we ask mom, we talk to dad, or brothers or sisters, close friends, those we grew up with, those who know us best. We want them alongside. We want to be in their presence. Somehow, we know that being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Mary, faced with uncomprehensible burden and gift, ran to Cousin Elizabeth's house looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through, looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could be something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town blessing, we seek a blessing. We light these candles of hope, of peace, of joy and love as a sign that we know blessing and we know waiting for blessing to be felt and lived. We light these candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing. It's time to go home. This Friday night will be a night to remember. 
a night when home broke in on us, a night when we were not forgotten or alone or abandoned. Friday night will be the night when here and there become one, when past and future combine in a breathless present, a night when we are home in ourselves, in this family, in the God who loved us enough to walk beside us. We gather to proclaim the light, shrug off despair, and embrace hope. When we set aside conflict and choose peace, when we push away despair and claim joy, overcome by hate, but rising into love, even in the shadows of our doubts, we know that we are loved. That's what it means to be home. And we light these candles, hoping to become the light, hoping to radiate light by how we live. We light these candles to create a space called home in this place, in our place, in inner places. We light these candles to declare that unto us a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. Welcomed home by angels singing and shepherds kneeling. Welcomed home by those like us who have worshipped for thousands of years. Welcomed home again that night, right here, right now in us. It's time to be home. Okay, if you would, please stand and we'll sing hymn number 218, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. It's in blue hymnal if you use the hymnal.
Please be seated. All right, as we go to the Lord in prayer, what are our praises and concerns? One that I want to share is that all of the uh, 17 hostages in Haiti have been freed. Amen. The, um, so we, we praise God for that. Okay, anybody else? Did yep. you pray for Mark? Sorry. Yes, Mark, Mark had uh, cataract surgery. And um, he's doing, doing well, but um, still got a while to recover. And she couldn't trust him <laughs> yesterday or today because he's not supposed to do much. Amen. And the wind blowing you know, on his face and on his eye and stuff. So, but we need to remember Mark and Sue. Yep. Um, Mom and Danny have a really bad sinus thing going on and um, just pray for them that it doesn't get worse. It, it, I think they're on the mend. But, um, and then Barry, my brother-in-law, Jennifer's husband, wants to pray for a co-worker named Cindy Hargis. And, um, She's just, they don't really know what's wrong with her, and she has had several blood transfusions. Okay, Cindy Hargis, they're not sure what's wrong, but that's a co-worker with uh, Jennifer's Barry. husband, yeah, Barry. 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 Most of you, you know, you all know Barry. Okay. Well, great. So Pam, they did do her surgery, and she is, uh, she's, she's eating, and um, she's on the mend. That's great. Yes? He has the flu, and he had had the flu shot. Who? Ethan, my grandson. Oh, Ethan. Right. Has the flu. I don't think this year's going to be like last. You know, that was that was a thing. It was uh, last year there was almost no flu. I mean, there was just virtually no flu. But now this year it's already coming back with a vengeance. Well, he had some friends that had it first, and they were all together, and one of them coughed and had a cold, and they were all together. No. Oh. Because they had him tested and everything. He'd come back and pull him the hay, so. Okay. Um, we need to remember Megan's, Matt is her husband's name. His grandmother, his mother's mother. Um, for some reason, I don't know why they did it, but the doctors didn't start her chemo when they were when they were going to, not chemo, um, kidney dialysis. And now her heart's too bad to do it. So, um, you know, just remember Matt's grandma. I need travel mercies for this coming Thursday. And also I have an unspoken request. So you're traveling to get them youngins? Oh, I thought you were going to get, thought you, oh, next week for that, okay. Uh, travel mercies again. Pray, pray for those people who've lost loved ones. It's always hard at Christmas. Yes, the firsts are already always hard, but um, travel mercies, let me get this down, and um, unspoken, you said. Who has 
parents that this will probably take his hearing. So we need to pray for him. And lastly, little Avery, her uh, address is in the bulletin. Avery is losing all of her hair and they don't know if it will come back. And she has a, a little box that she's hoping she's going to get some cards. No money, just cards. So if you have time to send that little girl a card, she's gotten a, a few. I announced it last week, and uh, they said she'll, she just gets so excited when she sees it. So if you think about that, I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Susan, how is um, the, the little girl down there? And tell me your name again. Gabby. 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 Oh, and remember my Megan, my, my daughter Megan. She's got some um, testing coming up. She's been having all kind of problems. But they're going to do a endoscopy. endoscopy. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I have a Thanksgiving for Glenn. He went to the kidney specialist, the nephrologist. And his test came back a little bit better, a little bit. But he's supposed to drink water. And she said, have you been drinking your water? And he said, uh, about 50%. <laughs> she said, you need to drink your water. Drink his water, Glenn. You hear that. Kidney failure. That's for people that's on dialysis. Yeah. There is a, a senior at Northwest, uh, Evan Lenz, and he has cancer. Evan? Lenz. L I N T Z. Okay. Evan Lenz. And pray for this Wednesday, all the people coming for uh, the food and and you got to realize how many years she's been doing that. Ever since the big old fat pastor asked her if she'd take over, and she said, "But, but, but, but I wouldn't take a no for an answer." You know, I was young, and you know, anyway, that was 32 years ago. Can you? Well, no, it wasn't. It was about. Um, 27, 28 years ago because it was toward the end when I left that I asked if she would do it. And she's been gracious doing it ever since. Amen. So, we thank you. Greg, I am grateful for the Christmas season and for the Christian Yep. Okay. Yes. Oh, great. So Ida's, Ida's still hanging in. All right. And Rick won't know what now? He's going to have tests to see if he has leukemia, but it won't be until January. Okay. And Joey had another really bad seizure. Joey had another really bad seizure. Joey? And Jennifer's little tiny baby girl is uh, 16 years old. How in the world that? Jennifer's only about 16, 17. I don't know how that had happened. But I tell you, I miss them. I sure miss them. All right. Are we ready to pray? Let's pray together. Father God, we come before you, praising you, giving you glory for, for the good news that we've heard and for the good news that you've called us to share. We uh, thank you for the uh, Haitian the missionaries in Haiti that have been released. We thank you, Lord, for, for the good news with Mark. He's come through that. And be with him and Sue. Lord, uh, be with uh, Nancy and Danny as they're struggling with this uh, 
cold, flu, whatever. We pray for Cindy Hargis, for Pam. Lord, we, we praise you for the good news there. And for, for Ethan, as he struggles with the flu. And for Matt's grandma, Lord, I ask you to be with her. We pray for travel mercies and unspoken requests. Little Oakland and her family, be with her. For Andrew, he's blind, Lord, and if they, when they do this surgery, he'll probably lose his hearing. But you are the God that created our sight, that created our hearing, and we ask you not to let that happen. Healing, Lord. We pray for Joey. And we just speak to these seizures in the name of Jesus. We don't know where they're coming from, but we just pray right now that you would bring healing. And for Avery, be with her. For Gabby, we thank you, Lord, for the continued good news with uh, Ida. We pray for Megan, and ask you to be with her. And Jennifer, and tra the travel, um, Lord. And for Rick, as he undergoes these tests coming up, we praise you, Father, for, for Glenn, the good news, and help him to do what he's supposed to do. We pray for um, the Lentz girl. And Lord, for this food pantry. We don't have to bring in a lot. If everybody would just bring in something. And we thank you so much for all of these years that um, Mary Lou has, has taken care of that for our community. And it's in your name, Lord. And we all, oh, we pray for Gail. And thank you that she could be here with us again. We continue to pray for Max. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the good news with uh, Paige and her oldest with getting his degree. We pray for George and Lily. Father, you be in our midst. Be in your nation, Lord. Be with our policemen and firefighters and all those who don't know you as personal Savior. And we'll give you the glory. For it's in your name that we pray. And amen. Amen. Well, I said I was going to switch things, or thought, as I was sitting here, I'm going to switch things up today, but what happened to my wife? I mean, she's just, so she's messing me up again. Okay. So, Neil, go ahead and stand back up, okay? And, you, and Paige, would you come up and collect, take up the offering? We'll worship with our tithes and offerings at this time.
ask that you would use these tithes, these gifts, this offering above the tithe for your glory. Use it here in your church. Use it in our community and use it all around the world for your glory. And we pray this in the beautiful name, the giving name of Jesus Christ. And amen. And so if you remain standing and if you want to follow in the hymnal, hymn number, we'll be singing hymn number 224, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, 224. Christian friends rejoice, heart and soul and voice. Whose news Jesus Christ is born today on the earth now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Christian friends rejoice, heart and soul and rejoice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Blues news, Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened driven's store. Ye we bless forevermore. Christ was born today. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice. Please be seated. Okay, the first scripture for today, it comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14, the New International Version. And there were shepherds out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Thanks, God. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, it's, it's, the big day's coming, okay? And for the next two weeks, we're going to look at the reason we celebrate Christmas. And at the very first Christmas, as Kevin just read, um, an angel announced three things that showed us the purpose of Christmas. Christmas. 
A time to get presents? No. <laughs> but it is a time to celebrate. It's a time for salvation and a time for reconciliation. And that's hard in some families. And we're going to look at how these three words really can change our lives forever. Like he, again, like he read when Jesus was born, there was a group of shepherds out in the fields tending their flocks. And that's when the angel came and gave them these three announcements. Gave the, the three purposes of Christmas. We all know it very well. I could have probably had you say it with him as he read. Verse 10. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. Why, why did he say that? Says they were terrified. But he says, do not be afraid because I bring you good news of great joy. Which will be for a few people. You know, those chosen ones. Yeah. For everyone. For everyone, all people. Now the first pur purpose of Christmas is celebration. Anybody going to celebrate? I hope everybody's healthy on Christmas so we can celebrate. I hope Danny and your mama get, you know. But it's a birthday party. There's a birthday cake back there. That's fantastic. I love it. When you said that, I didn't see it. But when you said that, I was excited. But too often, the guests, the guest of honor is left out. Left out of his own party. But that's why we say, Merry Christmas. You know, and God's really into parties. I'm serious. You know, the, the pictures of Jesus that I love to, the best is when he's smiling and laughing. You know, most of them, you know, like that one, he, he's not smiling. But Jesus, God, loved to party. So much, in, in fact, the Bible tells us that angels hold a party every time a single person turns away from their self-centeredness and trust in God. They have a party. I wonder if there's like a group that just does that. Because I don't know about you, but I keep my guardian angel busy all the time. I feel sorry for him or her or whoever. Well, there's no, there's, angels have no male, they're not male or female. But I, I, I tell you, I know my angel's awful busy. You know, there was a survey. They asked people, what are you going to be celebrating this Christmas? And here's some responses. Well, not a lot this Christmas. This is better. The blessings that we've had in our family this year. Now think about that. No matter what we faced, there's, God has blessed you. You're here. That's a blessing right there. Just the Christmas spirit. This must have been a trucker. Being home and not being on the road for the holidays. 
This is wonderful. Family. Family. I'm celebrating family. And this is the ultimate one. This Christmas I'm celebrating the birth of Christ. Okay? The birth of Jesus Christ. And this is sad. This one's sad. Nothing. I just want to get through it. Now I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but <laughs> there might uh, be some people that feel that way about even being here. I just want to get through that service. And maybe, you know, well, I don't think there'd be anybody watching that would feel that way because if they were, they'd just turn us off. They could just click and that'd be it. I just want to get through it. But hey, Christmas is a celebration. It's a party. And we're supposed to celebrate. And I hope, even if you usually don't stay for Sunday school, I wish you would, but at least go back and have a piece of Jesus' birthday cake. Okay? But, you know, we're supposed to be happy and celebrate, be joyous, not just happy, but joyous. I bring you great news of great, what? Joy. But with everything that goes on at Christmas, you know, busy preparing and getting ready and buying presents and planning, we don't even have time to celebrate. And we lose the joy of what the moment is really all about. I'm a people watcher. I love, you know, any time that Carol can drag me to the mall. I know some of you men are going, yep, that's right. The old lady drags me to the mall. That's the only way I'm going to get there. But I love to sit and watch people. I love to watch people Christmas shopping. Hundreds, perhaps. But they don't look happy. They just look pressured and stressed. And, and a little cranky. Anybody else got a little cranky? I was looking for Carol a, a pair of, of uh, slippers. You know, just slippers. Couldn't find. Of course, there's not much to shop here in town. But I went to the three places, well, two places, because the third one, Dots, is closed. They're no longer in business. I went, I tried, but they, nobody had them. They were great big. <laughs> Carol's just got little feet. She's just got little feet. But that crankiness will wear off on you. And we start to lose our joy. I started to lose my joy when I was in Walmart and all they had was them great big slippers. But the first purpose of Christmas is celebration. And the angel said it. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. See, the good news, and Christmas is a great time to share this, is that God sent Jesus to earth. And that he loves us. God's with us. And God's for us. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's worth celebrating. Amen? Amen. You know, the most famous verse in the Bible was John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Mm. And that's great news. God loved the world. Jesus was sent on an errand of love. Christmas is God saying, I love you. I love you. God is love. And not that he has love. The Bible says he is love. You know, God created the entire universe and the human race just so he could create you to love you. You might not feel real loved right now with all this stress and everything. But that's why you're alive. So God could love you. And he loves you on your good days and the bad. He loves you when you feel it. And even if you don't. He, he loves you when you think you deserve it. And when you think you don't. Am I the only one that thinks I don't deserve his love? No, I don't think so. We don't deserve it. But he still loves us. Because his love isn't based on what we do. God's love is based on his character, not your performance. You're going to write anything down this morning, write that down. It's based on his character, not your performance. You can't make God stop loving you. You ever heard a little kid say that? Make me. Go ahead, make me. Now, your boys never said that, Paige. Huh? No, no, no. Nope, nope, nope. But you can't make God stop loving you. You were created because God wanted to love you. As a man, he stretched out his arms on a cross and he died for you. And he was saying, I love you so much, I'd rather die than live without you. We'll never fully comprehend how much God loves us. He loves us. Not only does God love us, but He's with us. You might not feel it, but He's with you all the time. He never leaves you. Amen. The angel, a different angel, I think it was a different angel, told Joseph his, Jesus' name would be Emmanuel. Name him Jesus. What's Emmanuel mean? Jesus. God with Jesus. us. God's with us. And he'll never leave us. God hates loneliness. When he created Adam, right? The first human. 
He said, it's not good for man to be alone. Hmm. We need people in our life. We need God in our life. And being lonely is caused by not being connected to God. I mean, you could be in the middle of a thousand people and still be lonely if you don't know God. But the good news is, God says, I not only love you, I'm with you all the time. You know, there's, we're almost into 2022. We're almost there. And there's nothing you have to face in this new year that's coming that you have to face by yourself. You can, <laughs> but you don't have to. I don't know why you would. Because God said, I will be with you. A promise. And when God's near, it removes our fear. We don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. We've had a lot of worries this year. And I understand that. But we don't have to. We don't have to be anxious. God is near. God's right here with us. God says, I'm going to give you hope. So if you're lonely this Christmas, turn to Jesus and try to sense that awesome relationship that God has with us. He's not only loving you, he's with you, and the Bible says he's for you. He's on your side. He wants us to succeed. Ever, ever play, uh, you know, pick up ball, you know, basketball, baseball, whatever, it doesn't matter, and you would be chosen? Wasn't it lonely being the last person chosen? I didn't have to uh, be the last person when we played basketball. I was six foot tall when I was 12. Didn't have to be the lonely when I played football because I had a, a pretty good arm. Matter of fact, they limited me at the uh, river days how many stuffed animals I could win. It was terrible. Because I could just stand there and toss it through that little hoop all day long. He wants us to succeed. Don't believe me? You don't have to. Because Jesus said, God did not send His Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. Hmm. A lot of people are afraid of God. They get nervous, you know, when uh, people start talking about God. Let me tell you, that's guilt. And guilt separates us from God. You know, you might be thinking, well, if I get close to God, He's going to remind me of all these things I've done wrong. Nah. The Bible says God didn't come to condemn, He came to save. And that's incredible good news. You 
You know, when you wish somebody a Merry Christmas, maybe we ought to add something to that. God loves you. Merry Christmas and God loves you. Because you don't know how much they might need to hear that word. I love you, I'm with you, I'm for you. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Nothing that we face. That's nothing to God. Jesus didn't come to scare us. He came to save us. That's one of the very first words of the angels. Well, not the very first, but some of the first words of the angels were, don't be afraid. You know, there's 365 fear nots in the Bible. 365 fear nots. That's one for every day of the year. Fear not. So the first purpose of Christmas is celebration. It's good news of great joy for all of us. The second purpose for Christmas is salvation. And that's the second thing the angels mention when they announce the birth of Jesus. Today in the town of David, Bethlehem, a Savior, that's the salvation part, has been born to you. For you. A personal Savior. If nobody else, God was born for you. Try to grab hold of that. I, I can't. I can't wrap my, my mind around that. The, if nobody else, God was born to save you. And God never uh, does stuff that isn't needed. <laughs> If you didn't need a savior, he wouldn't have gone to all the trouble and effort to send one. Well, I don't need a savior. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Yes, we do. The fact that he sent a savior to earth means that we need a savior. Well, what do you need to be saved from, you might ask? <laughs> what does it mean to be saved? You know, he was saved. Was he drowning or something? Saved means rescue. Set free. Anybody ever said, uh, oh God, get me out of this? Yeah, you needed a Savior. With salvation, you're saved from something. You're saved from your past. From sin and guilt and worry and bitterness. And you're saved for something. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And then you're saved by grace. You don't earn it. You know, I'm, there's a lot of people here this morning that 
They work pretty hard for the church. But you're not earning God's grace. She's not here this morning. One of the very few times that Nancy hasn't been here in 72 years. Sitting in an organ. But she's not earning God's grace. How long have you been playing piano, Beth? Here at church. Thirty years ago? Thirty-two years ago? Let's see if she's got another forty years left in her. And I thank you. But you didn't earn it. Not God's grace. You can't. You're saved from sin. And that's what Jesus' names mean means to save people from their sin. Christ's earthly father, Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, was told in a dream, give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. What is sin? We don't have time. I got to get to the other church. But everybody's got a list. <laughs> and everybody always thinks, well, your list is worse than mine. But see, mostly sin is an attitude. Not something you do. What's the middle letter of sin? I. So is the middle letter of pride. See, sin is an eye problem. I don't mean like Mark's having, you know, had to have eye surgery. I mean an eye, me problem. Well, I don't need God. I'm doing fine. You do your thing, Lord, and I'll do mine. I know more than you do, God. So I'm going to do what I want. Not what you put me here to do. Anybody else tried that? I admit it. I did. I run for a long time. Then when I knew better, I still left and run. From 2003 until I came back two years ago, I was running. Knowing what He called me to do. Why I was put here. And that church is sin. Forget you, God. That attitude causes us to be separated. Ever pray and feel like your prayers just bounce off the ceiling? That's because there's a separation between you and God. Every one of our problems is caused by separation from God. Caused by sin. That's why He sent Jesus as a Savior. seven after. Let's pray. Dear God, I want to know you more. I thank you that you love me, that you're with me even if I don't realize it. I thank you that you're for me, that you didn't send Jesus to condemn me, but to save me, Lord. I admit that oftentimes I didn't realize I even needed a Savior. 
But today, can you pray this with me? Those watching or here in person, I want to receive your awesome gift, Christmas gift of your son. And save me from my past, from my regrets, my mistakes, and my sins, from my habits and hurts and hang-ups that mess up my life. And God, save me from myself. And save me for your purpose. I want to be what you want me to be. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, our closing hymn. Silent Night. Silent Night. We won't sing the German verse. <laughs> Let's stand as we say. And now receive this, the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing this Christmas season so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may always abound in hope. Through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And amen. Amen.